Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've done rain, we've done lightning as you can see here. We've done snow. We did a little meteor shower. Well, today we've got some clouds for you. And they're going to roll in from the left side of the screen there, as you can see. Well, I've kind of made them random shapes and random sizes and you can adjust it how you need to. They're going to float in from the left side, float across, obscure those mountains. And then there's going to be a few more clouds of different shapes and sizes. And in between, it'll sort of reveal the mountains for you. But you can adjust this to taste. You can make it move faster or add more clouds or make it less cloudy. However you want to do it. And as we can see, this one's passing by now. I've got it pretty slow, so it's almost like you're looking at a mountain vista and it's just rolling around in front of you. As you can see, that one's finishing there. And like the bus, there'll be another one along shortly. But it'll be a different shape, moving at a different speed. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I've done all the coding for you as usual. I'm going to start a new page. And we'll give our page a name. And I'm going to use the Divi Builder. I'm going to go ahead and build from scratch. DB throws in a section and asks you to throw in a column or whatever you want to throw in your section. I'm going to use this just one section from my hero type section. I'm going to put a single column in just like my other ones. I'm going to throw a little call to action in there. I'll leave everything how it is in the call to action there. Let's just add a button by going into the link and putting a link in where it says the button obviously put whatever url you want to take your people to always best practice open it in the same window if you're linking to your own site open it in a new tab if you're linking off site to somebody else's site okay i'm just going to go down to the background here i'm going to change that to a black like we did in the other ones i'm going to click on the dark black field there i'm going to pull this opacity slider down so we can see some of the image that i'm going to put behind there through this Okay, let's save that now. And for interest value, you don't have to put yours in the hero section. That's what I'm going to do today. And just to make this more interesting, I'm going to make this full screen. To do that, I'm going to go into my section, the blue tab right there. First thing I want to do is put in that little background image I'm going to use. So I'm going to click on background, always under content there. Third tab along is background image. And... Let's use that sort of mountainy one I had there was fine. As you can see, it's in the background there. Now let's make this full width, full screen. It's already full width, so all we need to do to make it full screen is go to our design tab, down to sizing. I'm going to use minimum height. That way, on smaller devices, it can get taller if it needs to, depending on your content. I'm going to write 100 VH for viewable height. As you can see, this image is now the whole screen size. Perfect. Just going to add a bit of padding on the top to push our content down a little bit. Close up sizing. Open up spacing. Padding top. Let's try 25 viewable height. 25 VH. That works for me. Obviously, it adjusts yours to taste. Okay. Well, this is a nice sort of mountainy picture with the sort of it's got its own clouds and vistas there. But to make these happen, I've written all the code for you, as I mentioned earlier. I'll put this link down below. You can just copy and paste this code. In the style tags here, we've got some CSS that's actually creating the class name. I've hidden any overflow so that these don't spill out into other sections. And we've got a CSS cloud that's being generated. And I'll go through this in a minute, show you how to make them bigger or smaller. And we're using an animations called float to make them disappear and reappear. They're starting off invisible. Then at 10%, they're coming in fully visible. And at the 100%, they're staying visible and moving to the right side of the viewport. Down below, we've got a script which we are actually generating these clouds here. And again, I'll go through this a little bit in a minute. You can add or remove the amount of clouds you want. You can make them bigger or smaller. But for the time being, all we need to do is select all of this from that closing script tag all the way up 
to the opening style tag. Control C to copy. Make sure you get it all. Make sure you don't cut off any of those curly brackets there. It will not work. So Control C to copy. Let's go back to our site here. Now I'm using Divi, but you can use this on any WordPress theme you want that, that allows you to put a code module in. You can also use it on an HTML site or a bootstrap site. You just have to link to CSS and JS files. So let's add a new module here. The little dark button to add a new module. I'm going to go for a code module. Inside that code module, I'm going to pop my cursor in there and paste what we just copied. Control V to paste. And there it is in there right now. Now you won't see anything on the back end here for two reasons. It won't read that JavaScript on the back end or not actively anyway. And secondly, we need to give the class name of clouds that we've created up here to whatever section that we want these clouds to appear on. And that in particular is this section up top here. So I'm going to copy this class name clouds without the dot. When you write it as code, you need a dot in front of it. When you apply it to an element, you don't need the dot in front. So it's just C-L-O-U-D-S. I'm going to copy it, control C again. We'll save our little code module there. We'll go up to the section we want to put it on, this little hero section here. I'm going to go over to my advanced tab. Under the advanced tab is always where you find CSS IDs and classes. This is true for sections, rows, and modules. If you click on it, it opens up CSS ID and CSS class. Make sure you paste it into the class and not the ID. It will not work if you put it in the ID. It's a CSS class right there. Great. Well, now we've done that, you've got exactly what I had on the other page. Let's make sure it's all going to work. So I'm going to save my page changes down here. And let's exit the Visual Builder. As you can see, we've got a little cloud coming in from the left-hand side there. And it's going to do pretty much exactly what I showed you in the beginning there. Now we'll just let that roll across a little bit. And then I'll show you how you can adjust it, make these clouds bigger, smaller, drop them down here a little bit if you want to, or even push them higher up if you want to. So that's rolling in there nicely, revealing those, or so I should say hiding those mountains and then revealing them as it passes through, like a nice little mountain vista. Let's show you how you can manipulate these clouds to make them your own. Let's re-enable the visual builder there. And we'll go down to the code module. Now code modules don't take up a lot of real estate. Occasionally you'll have trouble finding them on the front end right here. I can probably find mine, but if you, there it is. If you have trouble, what you can do is hit the little purple button, hit the little icon on the left-hand side, wireframe view. It'll take you to the back end. You can always get in that way. There's our code module. Once you're in there, flip it back to whatever screen size you like to edit on. Okay, well, we've got our clouds there. That's the class name. And we've got the actual clouds themselves. I've made mine pretty long. I've made mine 1200 picks. Let's take that down perhaps to 800 and they won't be quite as wide. And the height of 600, let's take them down to 400. They won't be quite as deep. Now I've given it a margin top of negative 300, which is pulling up, well, somewhere up there on the screen, which means my clouds are remaining at the top there, which I kind of like. If I reduce that, well, let's just put a zero in there. So zero picks, they'll be further down because they'll be starting right here. If we roll on down to our script now, here's the amount of clouds I've got. I've got only eight happening. You can take that number down, obviously, or up if you want more clouds. We've got a random vertical position here, which should be anywhere around the 30% of the screen, and it's going to fall down here a little bit. You can adjust that if you want to. And we've got random sizes. I've got some math calculations going on here for the width and the height. And you can reduce these if you want them smaller. So I've got this from 600 to 1400 pixels. We change that back to six or something like that. They can only get up to about 1200 then, six plus six. Same for the height right here. I've got them uh, 200 plus 300. I'm going to leave that just as it is. That's pretty much all I want to adjust here. And we'll take another look now. Let's save our changes. 
and exit the visual builder. And here we have our clouds starting to come in from the left hand side. As you can see, it's a bit further down now. I took that negative margin away. And it's kind of covering the whole mountain there. And of course, you can change the color of this cloud if you want to. This actually works for me with the sort of white that we've got going on there. But if you wanted to put a blue tint on there, you can do that in the colors. And I'll show you where to put that in a minute. As you can see, this one's a bit shorter. The others were 1200 wide. I've made this a max of 800. And it's sort of rolling out there. I imagine we'll have another one coming in shortly behind it. Like I say, I used some random mathematics to do that. Which CSS is, which JavaScript is marvelous at. Yeah, this is rolling off there to the right hand side of the screen. As you saw in the code there, you can up the number if you want to put more in there. And I'm sure, like I said earlier, one's going to appear on the left hand side in a moment and start coming in again. There we go. And you know where to up the number if you want more frequent clouds than that. So let's just go back in there. I'll show you how to change the color. I think I'm going to pop mine higher up on the top. I liked it when the sort of valley was more visible below. That's entirely up to you. You have it how you want. So let's re-enable this visual builder. I'm going to go down again to my little code module. Again, if you can't find it, you know how to get to the back end there. There it is right there. Let's, I'm going to leave the actual size how it was. That worked for me. Here's your background colors, which is pretty much a white right there with an opacity of 8. You can change that to any RGBA or web color you want there. We've got a filter blur. The more it's blurred, the more sort of faded the edges of those clouds are. I've got it blurred quite a lot. If you want them to have harder edges and come in hard, just reduce that size of blur right there. I'm going to put them back up the top of it. The original was negative 300, I think I had. Let's just try negative 200 for this. And put the PX on the end for pixels. Now let's actually up the number of clouds that we have going on there. I've got eight. Let's, let's make that 12, perhaps. And I'm going to up the width on them by making one of these a little bit bigger. So it's going to go from 600 plus 800, so that would be 1,400 pixels. That's how it was originally. Height-wise, I think I'll leave them just as they were. They seem to be deep enough. That's all I'm going to adjust here, and I think that's probably all you really need to know. Let's just save this. Again, we'll save our page changes. And we'll exit the Visual Builder. And there we have it. We've got our first cloud rolling in there. You may have noticed it's back to being higher up at the top of the viewport here. It's still reaching down quite a ways. So it's obscuring a little bit of that mountain there. And as it comes across, it's hiding these mountains, as you can see, or as you can't see. And it's going to roll by gradually, and another one's going to appear behind it. So there you go, guys. There's how to add a sort of floating cloud effect to your Divi theme site. Like I say, this will work with any site. You can use it with Elementor built WordPress sites. You can use it with Gutenberg with a code module. You can even put it on your HTML sites or your Bootstrap sites. And I'll, I'll make a demo of Bootstrap sites sometime in the future because... My bootstrap videos were quite popular. I haven't done one for a while. But that's a nice little thing to have on your site. And all this code, as I mentioned before, you'll find a link down below the video that will take you to here. Just do exactly what I did. And then manipulate it to how you need it. As you can see, we've got another cloud rolling in behind that first one there. So there we have it, guys. We've done clouds. We've done... Meteor showers, we've done snow, we've done lightning, we've done rain. So I'm not sure how many more of these sort of weather conditions that we can do here. If you have any ideas, pop them down below the video. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. 
Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them or make a little demo video just like this one. If you've enjoyed this today, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignInTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.